Dear students, we should learn about rational functions as well because these are a general category in the class of functions in economics as well. As we know, the word rational can be said to be driven from the word ratio. So there is uh, a sense of ratio in these functions. As you can see in this uh, standard form that we have written a ratio in which there is a polynomial in the numerator as well as in the denominator. However, they have been differentiated by using different uh, terminating values that is n and m. The denominator ends with m and the numerator ends with n. It is to show that not, the, not necessarily the same polynomials will be in the numerator as well as in the denominator. They are likely to differ. Uh, after understanding this part, we have to put a restriction on the denominator because this denominator, if it turns to zero, the answer of the, poly, uh, the rational function will be infinity, which is definitely not desired in economic situations and not interpretable. Now, this caveat is noted that the denominator must not be equal to zero in order to get some result which is more economic, uh, economically meaningful. Now, this is a numeric example of a, polyno uh, of a rational function which is composed of polynomial functions. As you can see in the numerator, there is a polynomial and there is a polynomial in the denominator as well. The caveat comes here again that the denominator must not be equal to zero in order to uh, make the rational function a defined function rather than an undefined function. Now here, uh, the degree of the equation in the numerator is 1 and the degree of the equation in the denominator is 2. So we can say it is the ratio of a linear function and a quadratic function. This is how the rational functions can be made. An interesting thing would be the diagram of it. And this diagram is having a certain pattern. It is in the negative quadrant as well. It has a wiggle as well. And then it uh, enters into the positive quadrant. That is the first quadrant. But this is where there is an interesting shape that it has. It, it's not parallel. And it's not having a sharp slope. It is bending but with very, very small fraction. So this is the important thing that we see in rational functions once we plot them. Now basically this kind of function, this segment of the overall function is called as asymptot. And asymptot is actually a line or a curve that approaches a given curve arbitrarily or closely. Now this given curve is basically the axis. And the way you saw it was moving along with the x-axis, but it was not likely to cut x-axis or meet x-axis very soon. It might take a lot of time, something which is beyond our understanding. Hence, it seems as if it is an undefined sort of distance. The vertical asymptot and the horizontal asymptotes are basically the two types of it. Because if this situation occurs along x-axis, we can say that this is a horizontal asymptote. But if it happens with the vertical axis, that is y-axis, we can say that this is a vertical asymptote. Now let's try to understand this with the help of a diagram in a better way. This diagram tells us that there is x-axis and y-axis as we usually see in the Cartesian coordinates. But this is that blue line which is moving in that shape and it's sort of L not having that kink on this side, but it's not precisely having a right angle because it is getting closer to y-axis here and it is getting closer to x-axis here, but it is not meeting it. As long as it does not meet it, it is known as an asymptote. And when it is moving along with y-axis, it is a vertical asymptote. And when it is moving along x-axis, it is a horizontal 
a SIM dot. And this can happen on the other side as well. As you can see, a similar situation is existing, a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Now, this is a symbolic representation of a rational function and hence its diagram, which is uh, giving rise to asymptotes. This is that function that we are talking about, the dependent and the independent variables. Now, if we choose a certain value of x, it will give rise to a certain value of y. But if we choose such a value of x that will make y infinity, then there will be an asymptote. Just like we talked about the lack of combination or intersection of x-axis or y-axis with the graph. And, and it seems to be an unending process, hence giving rise to the concept of infinity. Now, here you can see that there are two straight lines. One is this, which is represented with x is equal to b. And the other is, which is represented with x is equal to c. Let's choose the value x is equal to b. And that is basically driven from here. If I put the same value here as it is, the answer will be 0 in the denominator. And hence, the value of y will become infinity. So, if we put x is equal to b, y will be infinity. Now, if I look at it in the diagram, this is that straight line which is showing the value of x as b. This is where b is. And you can see the function is not cutting it, it's not meeting it, and it is just moving along the y-axis. Here in the other function, it is other curve of the function, same thing is happening, it is coming here. And it is not cutting that line here because it is avoiding the x is equal to b value which makes y is equal to infinity. So you see this makes sense. When x is equal to b, y is having an infinite value. It will go on, go on. It will not end because it will not meet it and it will not meet actually the y-axis. And now if I choose c as the value of y, if I put it here, it will become something like this, c is equal to a over x minus b plus c. Once I cancel these out, it becomes 0, 0 is equal to a over x minus b, and this will become x minus b is equal to 1 over 0. And something over 0 becomes infinity, and the consequence will be infinity. So, x will be infinity, that is the movement of the curve will go on along with x axis here as well as here, and it will not allow to meet it. This is how we can consider the various values of x and y that will make the other value, the other variable's value undefined. So this is how we understand the asymptotes. A numerical example is here, if x is equal to 2 in this function, y will become undefined and hence it will have this asymptote. If y is equal to 4 in this function, it will make x is equal to infinity and that will be observable when the curve will be moving here or there and not meeting x-axis.